The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the uh, Friday, the 8th edition, December the 8th of the Tiger Technicians Hour. And the Dow is actually up 80 points at 36,192. So I'm going to go through this because it's Technical Friday. I'm going to go through this very, very carefully, just one at a time. And I'm going to start off with this particular chart right here. Let's hope this is the one that comes up. Yeah. So within the context of markets, when I get some kind of a sell signal, I am looking for the kind of move that says there is bad news out there. There's always some kind of bad news. But the market is taking it seriously in the sense that it is impacting the market. So whatever the response is to economic news, whatever it is, the market suddenly says, uh-oh, this is terrible. So I've got one, I've got two um, aspects that I'm looking at right now. I'm not looking uh, even close to the um, idea that this is the kind of major sell signal that could turn down, say, the one we had back in August the 1st, when we got that on balance volume reversal right at the top, this is a little different. This is a work in progress. Therefore, the, to get a kind of sell signal that says, uh oh, now we're going down real sharply, there has to be the bad news, number one. Number two, there has to be some form of um, the characteristic of the market has to suddenly change. So instead of having these big 32-point up moves in the S&P almost daily and the Dow up 180, 250 points, what you need to see to get the signal that says, okay, now we're going down seriously rather than just a sideways choppy, choppy move, is that the futures need to have taken any news negatively and the futures, instead of being right now, the S&P futures, let me just go there. I'll show you something right here. Instead of holding and making new recovery highs today, uh, up 13, should in fact be down um, 28 to 32 points and then quickly down to 42 points negative. And the Dow should be 180 to 235 points and the Qs should probably be leading the way down, etc. We don't have that. So this is almost like uh, looking at the market in regard to the parameters that should be met if all the conditions are there for a really sharp sell-off. So as it stands right now, the um, we don't have that. The futures up 13, the S&P futures. The Dow futures are up 71. Not great, but they are up. So this is what I'm looking at. Because of that single leg A to the upside in the weekly chart, and even today, the Dow has extended that move in the weekly. It's still F slash A. F says, oh, my God, every every pullback. Uh, sorry, this should be a very serious pullback. A says, oh, man, every pullback you've got to buy. So at this particular point, we're making some kind of a, a sideways consolidation, a high-level consolidation, but... The unbalanced volume that gave a nice trigger right there on the uh, 1st of January was different to the one that was on August the 1st. This one's saying the momentum to the upside is starting to slow a little bit, but any pullback, it needs to start really soon. And if you take out the high of 36,292, this is a Dow made three days ago, you've extended it. Then what you can do is make a small little Kind of another little trend line like this, a rising trend line. And maybe that becomes some kind of a top. But what you've done is you've negated because the nine period moving average is still so strong. The MACD is still positive and the stochastic is still at 88% instead of 95 or 97%. It's 88. It's pulling back and the on balance is pulling back. But the indicator of last resort 
That's the 914. It's still strong. So I'm going to go to this chart right here, which I did back in August the 1st. And you can see that this is the 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 INDU. And in my webinar coming up a week, a Wednesday week for subscribers, um, you'll be able to get all my webinars if you sign up for that, plus all the, the calls that we're making. In the meantime, going into that Wednesday, I, the sooner you sign up. Look, that nine is still way above. You remember August the 1st? August the 1st was right there. That's where we were. Made a little kind of a hiccup to the upside. Uh, the MACD was still rising right there. Here the MACD is still rising. Uh, so there's a lot of work to do to get this nine period. And I'm not sure that in this particular move we're going to get it. The nine to go under the 14 period moving average. You'd have to see the Dow probably at 36,200. Oh, sorry, 36, 35,000. It's a thousand points down. So let's go one step at a time. So that just says if you get a signal, it's a starter of a signal, and you have to wait about probably with a 90 so strong, you'd have to wait about a week or so of negative news to see that decline. Okay, that's number one. Number two is um, the, the bad news. It could have been bad news out there. The jobs number was higher than expected. Uh, the market did pull back. In fact, pre-market was down 130 points in Dow Futures. And the S&P was down over 20 points. And now look at this. s and is up, up uh, 15. And the Dow is up 9,900 points. So that just says to me, you cannot rule out, even though we've taken some short positions today, you cannot rule out that this is going to be some form of a recycle with maybe just a small move to the downside and that we could continue higher based on the single leg A up in the weekly chart. The same thing here. Look at the S&P. SPX. Eh? So the S&P, oh, uh, 4601. It's actually taken that out. Now you've got yourself a possible G. Unfortunately, um, right here and that's with the macd still oh no macd's negative stochastic's down 72 percent on balance forms are negative but that nine period moving average is strong so i'm going to call that a g but i have to be very realistic and say g slash and that could become the new bottom that says slash b all right so the day is young we'll see where it closes but there is a new recovery high meaning that the 4607.07, this double topish area, is still active in the weekly chart. But what a big move in the weekly chart from 4103 to today's high of 4607. Cannot rule out that this is going to be a very positive leg A. Um, and if that's the case, then what we're looking at is the 4818 high of uh, January 2023. Um, 23. Yes. The lo wait a minute. Wait a minute. 4818. How can that be? That was 22. Why did I write? Uh, yeah, 22. 22 right there becomes a magnet line very soon. If, in fact, by the end of the day, there's a really strong up plot. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Basel Travel and Dow's up 110. SP's up. 15 will be a right now. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Hi, folks. Let me just say uh, so, the question is that G C and not B in the SP. No, I have to consider that to be why because there's your peak D, there's your peak E, and then it made a lower low than the trough from D. So this really is the start, either a continuation pattern, that's fine, G, but if it's a brand new buy signal, then I have to say that it could be an alternate count B. So I hope that helps you. And uh, so a question came in to me. I Just let me finish this here. So gold is down. Uh, you remember the Chapman Wave Roman candle, red Roman candle, inverted red Roman candle. Um, so this is the, the fourth session. Um, and now it's way below the low of the 4th of, this is a continuous contract, the 4th of December of 2152.4. Sorry, 2038.4. It's trading at 2028.9 right now. Um, the weekly chart is, that in, in essence is turning into a very big red Roman candle in the weekly chart. Now, what is a Roman candle? Basically, so um, let me just move this away because this did the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. It's where the wick is very long and the body is more than half halfway or more from the wick top or bottom. And there's a tiny little wick at the top or the bottom with a big, in this case, a red candle like that one there. And that basically says if within two to three sessions... Um, it, it actually, to the upside, an inverted red candle, it says within two sessions, if there is a period in a shorter time frame where the price holds um, the, the midpoint of the wick, the long wick, this is to the upside, it's the same thing in reverse to the downside. In this case, 21.24, and it does it within two days, there's a real good chance. Not only will you test the high, but break it, and if it was inverted, a green one, it would test the low and break it. Uh, but if it closes within two to three sessions, I like to say two out of three times below the left side low. And that's the low of, what did I say, 2038.4. And this is the second session out of four. So it's a little different. And it hasn't closed. It hasn't closed at 2028.3. 20, 20, so we'll see. That just says... Now what you've done, you've set in place some kind of a sell signal 
not a sell mode yet, no matter what it looks like. It just the nine is still way above the fourteen. We've just seen how that nine period moving average can be such a powerful, powerful medium. Um, so in this case, the MACD's weak, stochastic's down thirty three percent, on balance form is weak, little gray relative strength line, very weak. <clears throat> and um all I can say is that this does not look very good, certainly on the weekly time frame. So let me put this one to one back. Maybe next week I'll take it off. I don't like it when it starts to look so messy. Um, okay, so that's gold. Let's look at silver. SI. Uh, silver is, oh, that's an Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. A lousy weekly chart. 23.79, uh, down 26 cents. Yeah, this is not good action at all. And that just says to me, you can't give an exact mirror image of the dollar to the um, gold they don't work they, they directionally yes they do about the opposite thing but they don't necessarily go percentage wise to the same move or price wise so within that context gold is um, the dollar is only up 35 ticks at 104.01 and you can see this pullback from the 200 period moving average how important is that you'll see how many times it could reverse there and uh, the dollar is acting just okay but look on a weekly basis, this is now the second week that the nine period moving average has gone pink in the weekly chart. And that is, um, you know, dollars just kind of bouncing. That's all I can say. And now look at this the EUR, USD. This is a euro dollar currency pair. Did I hit something wrong? And say it again EUR, USD. There it is. Uh, right on the 200 period exponential moving average, it's either support is going to be a, a one to one to the downside. We'll see. I, at this particular point, it looks like it's trying to hold support before it was resi resistance. Now we'll see if it becomes support in this arch formation. Uh, that's the, but look at this USD JPY. How important is the 200 period moving average? Right there. It went right through. This is not, it just misses, i uh, calling it a Chapman Wave Roman candle. A red one at the bottom. When it's a, at a bottom after a big move down, you have to look for it as a reverse, a potential reversal pattern. This is the yen. I don't see that right now because the technicals are just so weak. But look at that 200 period moving average. I saw it when I was on the show yesterday. I think it was right at that level. It went under it sharply, under 142, and then it bounced and closed at 144. And it's trading right now at 144.12. That weekly chart. Is not a pretty sight, but the nine is not yet negative, so I'm just watching it very closely. That's number one. Number two is um, the pattern that I often talk about: Technical Friday, rectangle a, a pattern that has this big flag candle, flagpole high, then it pulls back sharply, and then starts to make higher highs and higher lows. Can go to um, all the way back in a lopsided cup formation within the rectangle, the, the large rectangle. This is not the, the narrow side was a rectangle we've seen so often lately, but this is the, the broad one. And this just says you can make a U-shaped pattern or an arch formation. In this case, the U-shaped pattern goes on the way up, and it can go to peak A, peak B, peak C, and even a D. But what the, the object is, it can go right to exactly or just under or just above the previous high in this case 151.94 that was made back in november uh no october of 2022 and that's where you got to be careful and that's exactly what happened it went there it happens to be g slash c no it's, it didn't make a new high did it yes it did by 151.90 it missed it by what? It missed it by a, a few cents. So, so far, that's a C. Okay? So, it went exactly to that level, just as the way that the, the rule of thumb is, and now it's starting to pull back. And this is the uptrend line, the up channel of the uh, yen. And look what happened. It went sliced right through it. And yet, the 9 period moving average is so close to turning down, but it hasn't. So, my suspicion is the dollar is still kind of weak. Gold is, you got to think of these things separately. I think the big gold rally had to do with the Middle East. The Middle East is in a, um, in a situation right now where a chunk of the, of, of the action that we were anticipating 
is hopefully, I mean, nobody wants to see deaths anywhere, but that, we'll talk about that as a separate thing. I'm just talking about it market-wise. It looks like gold is saying that the geopolitical angst that is always reflected by gold's action is receding. That's really what I'm saying. All right, good. Now, um, so what's British pound doing? I was asked, okay, British pound. Uh, British pound has made a peak F doji candle. It's pulled back with the nine, still very strong, but the weekly chart is kind of struggling. So we're going to have to watch it. Just watch 1.24 is the 200 period moving average. And anywhere in the next two weeks, if it gets to 1.27, that's a very good act. Because 1.28 is the 200 period moving average. Very consistent. Dow's up 91, SMB's up 16. The day is really young. We're an hour into the session. Um, I'll be back soon. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy holiday, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just finish this up and then I'm going to go to um, the couple of quite a stuff. Like you and the Dan, all the questions, I'm going to get to those. So, number 
number uh, that we're watching here in uh, crude oil, I said that the pattern that I've got says that maybe the 70, whoops, sorry, the 70, I said 70, it should be, sorry, 65, 64 level could be hit by the 15th. When's the 15th? That's next Wednesday. Yeah, and don't forget, folks, on the 22nd, the following Wednesday, I'm doing my webinar. Should be a good timing for this to look at what stocks could we be looking at and what, what positions would we want to take for um, 2024 looking ahead. And we will, some of them are going to start buying sooner, in fact. Um, so, so that's as crude oil, but there's a nice bounce today. If that bounce lasts uh, into Monday, I don't know what would take it suddenly down. But this is, look, it held the Chem Wave inside track uh, support target line right there, that, that P, trough F. And we'll see if it's able to hold because 7250 is the pink nine period exponential moving average. Um, and the weekly chart really uh, is this is going to the weekly chart. You'll see the weekly chart has got that straight that pyramid pattern straight up, straight down, inverted V from a peak D top. It's in leg C. The, the technicals are suggesting that crude oil should at least test the uh, 67 area, the 200 period moving average over the next few weeks. We'll be watching that closely. Okay, so I think I've done most. Oh, no, I haven't done the TLT. So look at this. Yes, the TLT in a leg D yesterday, peak D today, high of uh, just under the 96.29, 200 period exponential moving average. When did it last get there? It was lost there way back in March, April of this year, and it got repelled from the 200 period moving average. Um, and it hasn't even been close. It got fairly close back in June. At a peak D, it failed. He has a leg D, uh, maybe a peak D by the end of the day. And more importantly, what I'm looking at is that the MACD strong, stochastic strong at 92%, on balance volume is strong, but it's turning down. The relative strength is strong, but turning down as well. And I have to put this together with what? The TBT. And the TBT made a peak F. In the Chapman wave, A, B, C, D, e, F, G, uh, that's the notation. D is where other things can happen. 44.96 uh, back on the 23rd of October. Has that been smoothed out? 44.96, yep, still there. And it came all the way down to this support level. Now, and look at that, I forgot. Gosh, I forgot all about it. It made a left side, right side. Oh, my, didn't you realize that? Look, to that peak E right there, um, I didn't even draw this in with a, oh, I didn't finish doing it, but I had left side, right side price time match to to today. This is a daily, a daily chart to today with that plumb line in the middle. And right there, it hit it. No, yesterday to yesterday. There's a little price over there. So yeah, it's bouncing off that. So when I say to you that in this particular chart, right here. Remember, I, know I was talking about 10.20 this morning to later on, maybe uh, 1.10 this afternoon. It's going to be really critical. Does the market give back anything? Does it break to new highs? What does it do? Um, so all I'm saying, oh, so the question came in, Basil, could you please review oil? I say long USO calls for 12.13. Yeah, I think on a very short-term basis, um, I don't want to tell you what to do because I didn't tell you to get into that. You got it into it on your own. Congratulations. Nice, a nice um, analysis there. I would take a little bit off. You've got a, a very good immediate gain, and you must have got you must be looking at a profit right now if you got in in the last two days. Why? Because the technicals are still extremely weak, and you've got the 200 period moving average resistance at 34, 36 in the continuous contract. Oh, what am I talking about? You're talking about crude oil. <laughs> Let me just do that again. Uh, it's, it's the pattern is the same. So this is the same thing right here. So yes, you got in. If you've got in the last two days, you should be looking at a profit. 71.58. Actually, same thing applies to the TL, to the TBT, that is to crude oil. So I am saying to you, just be a little careful here because there's a doji candle. I love the doji candle low. I love the fact that there's a nice follow through green candle, but it's really days young. The MACD is not bad at all. Stochastic is making a little V-shaped formation from 6%. But you remember under 20% is like over 80% and holding in the single digits. 
you've got to see a really good move. So 72.59 is the level to watch. What I would do is, if you're able to do that on some position, just a little tiny bit. Oh, you took some off. Oh, no, that's too dead. Um, take a little bit off, because if you can take a little bit off, um, you, you, you're giving yourself a chance to hold the rest as long as you hold them over the weekend. If you hold them over the weekend, then I definitely would take a little bit off. Why? Because if there's a nice surprise to you and everything I'm looking at, I'm going to go through it again in a while, says that by the Chapman wave notation, the alphabet notation, I mean, I, mean, I, I wrote down just yesterday, I did a whole ton of stocks that are at D, E, or F. I did this morning, they were brand new D, E, F. So I even wanted to show you something here. Oh, of course, I wrote it down, and I won't be able to find it. Why didn't I write it down right here? Uh, anyway, I will look at it. But in the meantime, I'm suggesting you to that. It's people said in the den it feels a little heavy. I, if that, it's a very indefinitive thing to say it feels a little heavy. But I think the rally is now starting to feel heavy. That's what I'm saying. So that's the reason why we've taken some preparatory um, short positions. Uh, not very heavy. Well, I can't say one is one is aggressive, but the other is just to be in place to say that's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking we're going to pull back here. Okay, so now to that. So the seal uh, crude oil take a little profit. Now, where was I when I interrupted myself? Oh, the TBT. So the TBT is saying it's the same thing that there could be a bit of a rally here. Trav G slash C uh, TLT has made a leg D and maybe a peak D today. Probably a peak D. I'm just saying. You remember I was naming these? Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I was naming these things one by one. Um, I'm not adding something yet, but I'm saying this looks to me like it's going to come out of nowhere. The next surprise, if it is a surprise to the downside, because I don't see it yet. Yields, what, they pull back? They've been fantastic. They dropped sharply. So just one step. Two is on balance volume. Three is... <sighs> There is a chance that something intra USA, not external, but intra USA, is just going to come up and rear its head and say, whoa, oh, that could be a serious thing. Um, we'll see. All right. So, with that said, PLTR was the question. Oh, in the den, you had a whole bunch of questions that relate to what I'm talking about. Oh, I'll get to them. We have time. We'll be back for the next break, and we're looking at PLTR. If I can type in right here, trading down at offer peak C. Will it get to D is the question. Hmm. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, we've got a tough week. Yeah, we've got a quick volunteer uh, that made a peak peak in the weekly chart. And I can't remember, I, I, I'm surprised that I didn't do this. Look, this started the peak A at 13.68 with an exact double bottom at 13.68. That means you keep in place the peak A and the peak B. It gets B minus if it goes one penny below. So then it goes to C and a D. Because 13.68 was the starting point, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I typed in A, B. I, w I would have been... I almost always do this when the technicals are strong, but there's a chance that it could be an alternate count. It should have been a G-C, just under 22, and now it's pulling back, and it's trying to fill the gap. I'd say be careful. Palantir trading at 1758 because it's made the dreaded H, and it's done the one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I just say be real careful because um, it needs to hold 16.50, that whole area, a point lower. If it goes a point lower, then it's going to fill a chunk of that gap. 1489.85 is the 200 period moving average. So just be real careful. If you are long, I'm going to advise you, take something off and have a protective stop. If it starts to move, you can always go back in because the 9 period moving average is crossed negative. It'll take a move to the 1885 area for it to get strong again. So I don't know if you're in it, but you're looking to get in. But if um, uh, you're in it... Uh, have a have a, some kind of a protective stuff. Next question came in. So um, um, Tiger YouTube was. Let me just do this in order that I see. Oh, where is the GDX bottom? Well, the 200 period moving average. I was talking about this yesterday and the day before was 29 in the 2950 area. It's at 29.89 right now. The MACD hasn't turned across negative yet. The stochastic's weak and unbalanced volume is weak. Relative strength is still at about. 53%, uh, but that's it's, it's starting to weaken. So I'd just be real careful there. Um, and I would probably think that based on the action of gold, that if you want to get into the GDX, I was saying under 30 for subscribers is where I'm going to start to look at it. I'll do some work over the weekend. The day's young. I want to see where it closes, how it handles this 2950s 200-period uh, moving average. And I want to check the weekly chart out um, before. I, I think there's time to go to the long side. But as I say, I think that gold was used as a geopolitical um, kind of a insurance. And now that's just fading a little bit. And we'll have to see what happens. Anything can happen, uh, you know, if, if it comes back. But as gold, but I like the fact that it's come off the 25.62 low of October and it's had such a big move to 31s because it had a move from the 32s, 33s down to 25, and now it's kind of come back. But that candle of, um, you want to see in the next, in December, you want to see 32.93, the candle high of the 21st of July. You want to see that. It doesn't have to be close above it, but you want to see it touched. That's important. So right now, if you're thinking of gold, um, it's getting close to where I would consider it I'd have to do an analysis of the stocks, but I'd consider that maybe that's forming an attempt at a bottom. 
all the way down uh, to the 29 level. The close under 29 says, uh uh, this is a big problem. But right now, it's just that's the area. So, where's the bottom? I'd say in the in the 29s, it needs to hold. Next question came in. Um, let me just, I'll read these things very quickly. Uh, Meta, uh, is that? Who said that? Mm. Ah, Rochelle. Uh, was that Rochelle? No. Yeah, Rochelle. Metalicious, very nice. I like that. Metalicious, yeah, Meta's pulling back. Um, huh. This is a tough one, and I'll tell you why. I think looking out that monthly chart says it's going to make you higher highs. It's at a leg B, and it's probably going to go all the way back to the 384 level over the next maybe two months or so, three months. And, but the weekly chart is I'm holding well. I keep holding that 14 period moving average. I need to move quickly away from it, and it's doing that, although the MACD is weak. Stochastic is good at 87%. And the daily chart has this pattern that I call the falling X. You go up. And all of a sudden, you stall, make lower highs and much lower lows, and then you try to find support. So this is the level to watch. If Meta, formerly Facebook, I still can't say Meta. It's really tough for me. Um, if it can close any day, any day next week, if it can close above 30, 336, it's trading at 329. It's not a big deal, seven points. That's going to be a big positive. Uh, the MACD and Stochastic are all terribly weak, and it's got the 9 period moving average, but that will finally cross positive. But if it take, gives back today's gain by Wednesday of next week and it's trading below 320, that's going to be a problem, and it's going to be a problem that needs to be resolved um, quite soon after it does that. So at this point, it's acting well, but it is in a, a sell signal in the daily chart. I have to wait for the close to say it's a sell mode. I think it's just a sell signal. Weekly chart is in a buy mode. So that's what I wanted to do for Meta. Uh, so it's acting well. Yep. Next question was Meta, Meta, Meta. Um, Triple M. I spoke about this yesterday. I said, look at that fantastic move. Um, it's gone from the uh, 80, 85 area low round. Uh, was that a round number low? I think it just missed it. 85.35 on the 23rd. And here is at 104, 20 points higher in a leg. I, I'm going to call this F. But it hasn't made an instant restart, so I'm calling it F for now. But I am going to say, on a very short-term basis, the 200p moving average I mentioned this yesterday was 102.62, and I think that's going to. This is going to be a containment area. This is the way I'm looking at uh, Triple M, 3M company, um, the daily chart, <clears throat> weekly chart is in the leg C, very quick A to B to C, and that just says just be careful. Uh, it could consolidate a little bit, but this is a really nice action. And a really huge loser from 208 down to the 85 level, uh, and now it's bouncing a little bit. So keep this in mind for the in my webinar. Stocks like Triple M are the stocks I'm going to focus on to say will those former big losers become really nice winners? Uh, they're already. I mean, this is already 85 to sub 20, 20 something percent. So that's a good move. Okay, Triple M. Next question came in. Could I look at um, uh, so I did Palantir, ARKK. -A this is also on my list. I think, no, it doesn't look very good there, does it? Um, ARK, ARKK. Yeah, ARK is um, ARK Innovation. Very nice. It squeaked to another leg higher. This is a G. It was almost like triple M. Um, so this is a little different because we've been waiting for the, the real laggards like a, like an ARK innovation. Another thing I'm going to be talking about in great deal, we might start positions in some of these things this coming week rather than wait for any big pullback because if you've got the rotation into the sectors that were the weakest, they should hold up the best. They should if they're going to go to another big move to the upside. If they are not, they're going to plunge really any weakness. We should start to see these are the ones that should fail immediately, but they're not. So we've got... A rotational leadership here, and that's why the IWM is good. So this is acting very well. I like it. Should have grabbed it ages ago. It's at 49. It's still way off the 125 high, and it still has to make this double top. See if it can break the monthly chart, the daily chart, part for the high in the low 50s. So it's acting very well. It did break its resistance level. The arc is acting very well. 
Our next question came in. Uh, CLS, CLSK. I love this stuff I looked at the other day. I'll be back. That's a chat for guys down at 60 PS. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! Oh. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors everything in the universe is governed by the fibonacci sequence this mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market to stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of sign up for the fibonacci 24 7 newsletter at tfnn.com when you subscribe you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader larry pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to and you can trust larry's analysis after all he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just do this uh, before I finish this. Thank you, Friday. Yes, this can be considered an instant restart in ARC because in the three bars, we made a new high from the peak D, so that becomes E, F, and G slash C. I always put that in G slash C. Now, a couple of uh, things to look at here. When you make a G slash C and you've already gone just very nominally above the previous high, um, look how quickly it's gone to peak from D to E to F to G. Um, you've got to anticipate that, yes, you could go to a D, but there's a really good chance that you're going to come back into that 46 area for ARC over the next, I'd say, if you give it like, five, six sessions into maybe Friday a week. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Um, unless the move here in this GSSC goes 
the same leg that started today with a new recovery high goes all the way to, say, the 50, 50.75, 51 area. That's different altogether. That becomes, that changes it completely. So CLSK, just let's do that. Yeah, clean spark. I love this chart. I don't know what happened to break out like that. I had it as a screamer the other day showing up as a screamer. I didn't do anything. It was at a peak. C, a D, pulls back. And look at this spectacular gap up move. And now it's trading at 10.19. So uh, if you're long, just keep holding on. I won't say anything about that. And Riot is a little different in that Riot is, um, is an alternative count, but it's at 16. I think between 16 and 16.50 is going to be a bit of a bump, uh, a resistance level, just short term. So with that said, Dow's up 160. Good action so far today. And have a wonderful rest of the uh, weekend.